You say something, you say no. All right, welcome back. Um, let's quickly dive into our subject matters for this morning. You're still watching News Up. Um, like we intimated earlier, Amor Tekun will make part of our conversation. That singular initiative by the Southwest Gov. Some Southwest governors had raised uh, quite a lot of ugly dust in the papers today. Was a gog with reactions and counter reactions uh, from different quarters. Even the Mieti Allah has set has stepped into this conversation as well. Um, but then we would be We'll be talking with him, Comrade Taiwo um, Shomade here to give us insight into a few grey areas that we need um, um, to clarify. But also remember, sometime during the show, you would call in and make your intervention and the contribution. Comrade Taiwo, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Yes, I'm a techno. I mean, we all know what it stands for. We all know what it is aimed at achieving. But yeah. so far, it is heat, um, a brick, a brick jam. I mean, a lock jam, as, yeah. as we speak. Uh, from your perspective, you're from the Southwest. Do you think uh, uh, this project in itself um, comes with um, uh, a lot of positives as against the negatives? Yeah, I think the positives outweighs the negative. Amotenko is a, is a laudable program, but like most programs, it has a political undertone. The political undertone is what we are seeing playing out right now. All the governors in the Southwest came together, they fabricated it, they designed it, and the implementation was okay. But now, for some political reasons, <laughs> we are beginning to see the visions. That is human for you. But give and take, Amoteko is a laudable program. I will tell you, it has come to stay. Security is the responsibility of government. But in some cases, the people may be forced to take their personal security into their own hands if government is not responding as expected. Amotekun is a, is, a, is a child of necessity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It came as a desperate solution to, to incessant killings, murder, uh, kidnapping, and the security agency seems to, to the security agency seems not to have answers to that. Mm. Today, Professor Reti was still lamenting. talking, lamenting that nothing has been done about his daughter. We also, and I mean, it was a pathetic case. The old man seeing his daughter be murdered right there, you know. Amoteku, like I read in the uh, papers this morning. Some, some Mieti Yala or one young man was saying Amotekun is, a, is an offshoot of Nandi Kanos. I think that is a gross misconception. Amotekun is, like I said, a child of necessity and it came at a time where there is a need for the southwestern people, not the southwest alone now. If you go towards the Middle Belt, the people in the Benue axis are beginning to buy into the idea of a Motekun. The Southeast have come up openly and said, this is what we want. When you, when you force the people to a level, they will be challenged to defend themselves. And let me quickly say this. The idea of uh, uh, the, the chief judge saying is a legal. Yes, yeah, the, CJ, the, general of the, the attorney general yeah, saying he's illegal. I don't think it's within his powers to say that. Let the court decide the legality of Amotekun. Amotekun has not come up with firearms. Amotekun, I can remember vividly at the launch of Amotekun, the, the national security operatives were present. That is to tell you that initially, originally, the design has no clash with national security. But because some people are threatened, some people felt, no, this should not happen. 
And that is usually the hallmark of oppressors. Oppressors don't want you to raise voice. Okay. Oppressors don't want you to defend you, you've yourself. You've already put on the, the, the cloak of a comrade now. <laughs> but yeah. before you do that, you've yeah. actually thrown up a whole lot of issues that uh, uh, time would definitely not be fair to us to look at. You talked about the political undertone. Yeah. You talked about the child of necessity. Yeah. But can we, can we give a benefit of doubt to the AGF? Okay. I listened to or I read through his statements. Yeah. And the clear thing he said is, Security is on the exclusive list in the constitution. I'm not sure. I think your dad is a lawyer. I know you are not a lawyer. <laughs> you understand <laughs> that it's, it's it's on the exclusive list. In other words, yeah. the federal government is in charge of security. Yeah, it shouldn't be, you know, given to the governors. Yeah. Can we look at it from that angle? The exclusive list, yes, is a legal term. Like you rightly said, I'm not a lawyer, but I'm vast in the issues that particularly will protect my life and property. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot leave my security into the hands of someone else. Exclusive list, like I said, is a legal term. But you and I know that there are desperate, uh, there are desperate situations where you need to secure yourself. You cannot be going on the street and a madman is coming at you with a machete, and you say because government should take care of the madman, you won't defend yourself. The issue of Amoteko does not negate the necessity of the exclusive list of governance. Now, the issue of exclusive list should be looked critically, looked into critically. You cannot leave the people without protecting them and you expect them not to take a desperate measure, that is a place where we need to check into the exclusive list. And besides, the CJF has a right to watch AGF, yeah, right. Sorry, the AGF, the Attorney General, has a right to his statement because he should protect the sanctity of government. That's true. But the reality on ground speaks otherwise. In as much as you have a right to protect government, I have a right to protect myself against any aggression. Yes, government has a bigger responsibility to protect us against external aggressions. When it comes to internal security, I think there is a need to review the constitution regarding the issue of exclusive list. For example, we saw cattle here, uh, cattle headsmen coming to attack people before help could come from the national security agencies, a lot of lives have been lost. And you don't tell me such communities will leave their, hand, their, their lives into the hands of the police. In most cases, in Benue State, in Plato State, they call the police before the arrival of the police. These people came, unleashed mayhem, killed innocent people, and escaped. The police came, started harassing innocent people. The victims. The victims. Is that what you call the exclusive list? Is that what you call governance? Now, the same thing happened in Benue State. In the southwest here, we have people who claim to be cattle headsmen. They came, mutilated our farms, our farmlands, destroyed our crops, and we attempted to protect ourselves. The police said no. But if we have an Amoteko in place, the Amoteko is a local guard. Then in the north, there are a variety of local guards. We have the civilian JTF. Are you telling me the exclusive list of governors is not reflected on the civilian JTF? Why is Malami not making references to that? Now, in the southwest, you need to protect yourself. It is not the Southwest alone. In the East, these people are vulnerable to attacks from unscrupulous elements. Yes, some people come under the guise of headsmen. They are not headsmen. But however, the people have a right to defend themselves. You cannot tell me to live my life to somebody who is in Abuja. And let me quickly say this. The president has never come out to say Amatekun is wrong. 
before the issue of Amoteko, the Southwest government, uh, governors met the president. They were summoned. They were summoned. Summoned on invitation, whatever. They met the president. They told <laughs> him his mind, their mind. They met the president. I want that on record. They met the president. Yes. And they let him know the, the necessity involved in the creation of this Amoteko. Now, the president, I think, is alone on this. His people, let me put it that way, his people, his people, some people felt threatened by this Amoteko because they won't have a field day any longer. Mm. Amoteko is not, has not been established to attack government. Amoteko is not a rival to the established security forces. We want that cleared. Amoteko is not a rival to the established national security forces in Nigeria. Amoteko is just a local way okay. of ensuring that mm -hmm. people don't come into your neighborhood and take what belongs to you. Okay, um, Comrade Tao, um, very well. Uh, let's, let's, let's move on. This child of necessity, yeah. uh, the Amoteko, seem uh, uh, there are indications right now that um, the political undertone now uh, is probably seemingly yeah. overriding it because as we speak um, of the mm. six governors mm. and have come together to put this initiative together mm. um, only three of them seem to be speaking on the issue uh, I don't know I'm, I'm getting a bit I'm getting a, I mean a different um, uh, uh, feedback here yeah. uh, is it that um, this child is um, about to die uh, <laughs> uh, uh, prematurely before birth because if um, the, 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 the key players that uh, came together seem not to be any more together, seemingly, because um, let's wait and let's, let's hear them come out and defend uh, this initiative, but that is not um, happening. One of the governors, I, I, I personally know one of the governors in the Southwest. And from what I've seen so far, the political undertone is rather unfortunate. But I don't think it's going to affect the, the, the survival of Amoteko. Now, let me put it this way. Sorry, one of the governors you know now, yeah. is it one of the three that are speaking or one of the three that are not Don't speaking? Speak. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I want to save you the stress of mentioning the name. No, no, I won't even say whether he's speaking or not. <laughs> Don't but, worry, but, we'll but, spare you. <laughs> but the truth is that the political undertone is this. There is mutual suspicion hmm. that somebody is trying to use the Amoteko for personal gain. And the personal gain is not in tandem with the general consensus agenda. 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 You see? So when we say political, the, the, this is a fair political undertone that can be addressed, and I can assure you it's being addressed as we speak. The three governors that are not speaking are not against Amoteko. Okay. They, they contributed. I get the message. They contributed massively. Yes. Every one of them bought the vehicle. Both, both financially and morally yeah. to Amoteko. So they were just asked to be mute for now. Y yes, for now, <laughs> they just have to set some I, I, things I'm, straight. I'm trying to look at time because very soon we'll open the lines. Let's look at the second issue the Supreme Court judgment. Yeah. Once again, you're not a lawyer, but yeah. you are a Nigerian, yeah. and you're a public affairs analyst. Yeah. Let me get, have your own take. Well, the Supreme, Imo. the Supreme Court judgment on Imo is all politics. The politicians have a way of dealing with themselves. I've come to realize that when it comes to political issues, it is he who can convince the judge that takes the day. One, in Imo, the APC came forth, according to INEC. But the, th the two other parties that came first, and uh, that came second, second and, third. and third, yes, they challenged the victory of the PDP. But quite unfortunately, their prayer, part of their prayers was not that they should be declared winner. The APC prayed the court that they should be declared winner. Now, according to the wisdom of the court, I've realized that after reconciling the figures, the APC had the majority vote. The candidate of the APC was declared winner. My take is this. 
the true position of what actually happened on the field on that day in Imo State was not clear to all of us. But in the wisdom of the court, the court has to take two things into cognizance. The peaceful coexistence of the people. One, then two, justice. That the man with the highest vote should be given the specter to rule. However, personally, I felt there should be a rerun in that state. But in the wisdom of the Supreme Court, they've taken a decision and so be it. <laughs> in the wisdom. Yeah. Like, like they have the all wisdom. Yes. <laughs> That's the way yes. you sound. That, okay. that, that you was... need to sound like a lawyer right now because, <laughs> because lawyers will, them, their loyalty, I mean, they have undivided loyalty to the Supreme so Court. So it sounded like one now. Anyways, let's, let's move on. Let's, let's, let's just move on. Um, I'm looking at the figures here, like I, I intimated before uh, yeah. the show started. Um, for for the, the Imo election, um, we have yeah. a total of about um, 823,743 yeah. uh, uh, voters. Yes, that was the accredited voters. Yeah. And now with um, the addition of um, the 388,000 to the total votes, vote. we see uh, the votes coming to 927,000. 630 votes, uh, giving us a difference of 103,887 uh, votes. votes. Is it, this one begins to question uh, the, the judgment. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know, does this give me any ground to question the Supreme Court judgment? Well, as it is today, the Supreme Court is the final arbiter of justice in Nigeria. Now, the difference in the figure is solely on the table of INEC. INEC has the responsibility to see to this. INEC has the power, the constitutional power, to reconcile figures. If INEC could have come out and say this vote is higher than what is on ground, I can assure you the Supreme Court wouldn't have gone in the direction the they way. went. You see, I, I blame INEC for what has happened. That was why I said we were not there personally. It was INEC's responsibility to give us a clear picture of what happened on the field on that day. That was why I'm blaming INEC. INEC created the lacuna for the Supreme Court to do whatever they've succeeded in doing. Okay, let's look at it from this way. Um, as much as, like Agbakova explained, is yeah. irreversible as yeah. the Supreme Court. But we try to learn from it so that yeah. um, INEC, political analysts, political journalists, every one of us can learn something from, from it. From it. Yeah. Uh, uh, looking at it, someone will ask that, um, because I, I've seen uh, uh, some comments by lawyers of Ihedioha responding when they say it did cause the, uh, the, the, the trouble. Yeah. And they explain that it is not true that there was a counter petition to the results yeah. that uh, APC is laying claim to. That's true, yeah. That uh, out of the 338 polling units, it's just 25 polling agents that came up. And why would you take, a, 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 you know, the, 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 the easy exhibit or whatever they call it yeah. from a police officer as what is now tenable? Oh. So I'm looking at it from the angle of good. Opus Zodema is the governor of Imo State. But is he, will he have the moral justification to say, I got a, a good number of votes from the people, or he would have to start selling himself to them that truly the votes were truly merited? Okay, let me put it this way. Like I said initially, that the Supreme Court considered two things, the peaceful coexistence of the people mm -hmm. and justice. Now, on the peaceful coexistence, the problem, one of the things, one of the indices the Supreme Court took into cognizance is this. The former governor, let me put it that way, the former governor. That's uh, Hediora now. That is Hediora. Was, was beginning to lose taste among the people. It's one of those things the Supreme Court was able to cash on. You assumed now? Not assumed. If you, if you look at Imo State, most of the legacies he, meant, he met on ground, he started demolishing them, abolishing them, destroying them. You know, let me, Imo State is a Christian state. The church is very powerful in Imo State. 
if the church leaders in Imo State can come out and say this man is beginning to demolish what we are, but what we are doing, you understand? There was an uneasy calm, uneasy tolerance on the part of his government. Uh, government. Now the Supreme Court saw that. They knew with the judgment they are given, there is the possibility of people not likely to react. But coming to the legal aspect, I think there is a need to revisit the powers of the Supreme Court. Mm. Because like I said, in the wisdom of the Supreme Court, it has become a norm in Nigeria that you can run to the Supreme Court and if you are able to convince, let me use the language, if you are able to convince the Supreme Court that blue is black and the Supreme Court buys it, then blue becomes black. One of my friends from, I have a lot of friends from the East, one of my friends from Imo State kept crying. He said, ah, Shomadi, how can number four become number one? I was in the city room, we were both discussing. He said, I can number four, become number one. The things still they disturb me. That is the problem. But the fact is, despite that judgment, the people are not ready to react. Because the former governor created room. You see, when you are a good leader, when you serve with the people and you carry the people along, if there's going to be any, let me, let me put it this way, if there's going to be any uh, intrusion into your juris, I mean, area of juris, uh, uh, jurisdiction, people will react. What happened in Imo State is not likely to happen in Lagos, for example, because the people, the ordinarily the people will tell you, no, this is who we vote for. But you see, but the, that, that wouldn't have made any difference. The Supreme Court has spoken. Yes, case. but the Supreme Court may not find it easy. When the Supreme Court gives judgment, they relax. Right. They study, they study the Commentary, temple. I yes. can assure you that there's a good number of our callers are going to disagree with you. It's just, let's see. It's just a prediction. Yes. <laughs> let's see. <laughs> we'll get that. Quickly, let's quickly have your comments so that we can open the lines on the Armed Forces Remembrance Day. Yes. Oh, that's what, what I want. That's what I want to. The ritual is, I like that language, it's a ritual. It's a yearly thing now, February 15th. But I think January fifteenth. So, January fifteenth. Okay. Sorry, so I think some soldiers should be exceptionally recognized. I have one one guy of that nature in my mind, uh, Ebuka Wabwizi, one of our soldiers in the north east, mm. who rescued a village, mm. and among his uh, people. There was a woman, a, I mean a pregnant woman, Labor. and this guy single-handedly, I mean, uh, uh, delivered the woman. The woman, the, from the north, the woman was so impressed, she had to name hmm. her child, Abuka. You know, they are Muslims and not an so Abuka, hmm. because the guy's name is Ebuka, Ebuka hmm. Wabweze. The government should come up with issues like this to decorate this you, I mean you don't need to decorate people that are dead alone mm. you when we have heroes young heroes like this Ebuka is from the east he was so strong in battle and at the end of the day not only strong his humanity sp spoke volumes for him and I think when we are talking about Armed Forces Remembrance Day Armed Forces Remembrance Day we should bring people like this on board and decorate them mm. so that other soldiers will be encouraged to do more. Mm. Thank you. Uh, okay, uh, uh, I, I want to believe the lines are about being opened now. Um, a viewers out there, you can call in and make your contribution. Our focus this morning is um, Amoteku, Imo election, and the Armed Forces Remembrance Day. I remember when you call, uh, turn down the volume on your TV set so we can hear you and be very precise and straight to the point. And make yourself very audible so that uh, we can hear you as well. The lines are about being open. Yeah, so uh, let, us, let, let the call starts coming in. Yes, um, um, Taiwo Shumade, um, yeah. I... 
I'd followed the military for a while now, and um, mm -hmm. when we look at the happenings in the Nigerian military, to a large extent, it is saddening. We, we had a guest who came on the show sometime during the weekend. He talked about the fight against um, Boko Haram, and he says to us, he says, the fight against Boko Haram, if the leaders within the military hierarchy are sincere to fighting Boko Haram, it shouldn't last 10, this long, 10 years. He says it has lasted this long because some individuals are benefiting from this war. Well, uh, to some extent, I, I agree, but not in entirely. One, the fight against Boko Haram is not a fight against an established army. The Boko Haram is what we call flash soldiers. They come, they unleash them, they disappear. The, the, the most unfortunate aspect is that an ordinary religious fanatic could just wake up and react in a Boko Haram manner. So how do you determine a Boko Haram member? So that fight may not end in a specific given time. However, I, I want to tell that belief, the line of that belief too that some very senior military officers, not military officers alone, even the civilian uh, co-actors are benefiting from it. We all know that as a fact. Mm. Some people definitely, for example, some of these allowances. allowances. Okay, comrade, yeah. like I promised or like I hinted you, we have our first scholar for today, Emmanuel from Plateau State. Emmanuel, please turn down the volume of your TV set and talk to us. Hello? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay. Uh, is it time for us to contribute to your Yes, question? it is time. That's why you're on. Go ahead and talk to us. Okay, I want to comment uh, slightly on, uh, on uh, the judgment and the entirety of uh, uh, the legal system. We do not, most of us do not believe in them. From all sects, by the way, the setup of uh, of uh, the Supreme Court is fundamentally biased. If you look at the way the chief justice came, initially the lawyers, most of these big, big lawyers protested that it was not proper the man that was set, sent out by us did not come by the proper way. Suddenly, all the lawyers that protested that came to court, about 100 and something of them, begin to take briefs, presidential briefs, and so on and so forth, uh, uh, gubernatorial briefs, and they deviated and they ran away from that protest against the former chief judge. The truth is that, let me be clear, the truth is that our legal system is a total failure. Justice, there is no justice yet. What you can, what you have is what you get. Thank you very much. All right, thank you very much, Emmanuel. Um, let's quickly speak with Chidozier, who is calling us from Emo State. Chidozier, the floor is yours. Good morning. I, 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 I said... She does say you need to turn down the volume on your TV set. Turn down the volume on your TV set. I've completely moved away from the television. I'm not. No, it is not about moving away. Turn it down completely. It's interference. It. I mean, it's it's waves. It's airwaves. It moves through the airwaves. Okay. Okay. Let me do that now. Yeah, I'm I'm doing that. Okay. Okay. Speak to us quickly. Yeah. Speak to us. I have done that. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, my name is Jesus Nekibubi, I'm calling from him, Okay. Okay. Right. Go ahead. Well, there was nothing wrong with uh, the performance of the of the Deputy Head as the governor of Imo State. He was doing well. We are amazed at the Supreme Court. When don't go the panelists there was saying that the car in Imo State was because the Deputy Head was not doing well. We don't think so. I personally don't think so. We are law abiding people and we believe that any breakdown of law and order may result to bring 
Okay, quickly, let's take Mark from Ogun State. Mark, talk to us. What's your view and what areas are you looking at? Mark, you're on. Go ahead. Let's talk to you. Yeah, good morning. Yeah, good morning. I just want to talk to you about the, the new security outfit that was put together by the uh, Western uh, government. Mm -hmm. I think for me as a person, I am still seeing Nigerians too backward in a manner that they have refused to address the right thing, the, uh, the, 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 what they're supposed to address. First of all, if you go to the Western world, look at their schools, look at what they are doing. Even in primary schools, you will see their primary schools, they are even far, far better than the university we have in this country. Nigeria has failed to invest in the right direction. If we have been able to build up our youth, build up the society, we would not be having problems with all these uh, security threats. Now we still have a whole number of people roaming the streets on daily basis. Even we have uh, uh, graduates who are not employable because they, they, where they are coming from, they have no background, they have no basic background, even though they have gone through schools. I would have a, 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 would a situation whereby we go back and emulate the Western world. Even today, you look at what is happening in uh, Iran, Iraq, and so on and so forth. They don't even deploy much uh, uh, personnel into, their, into the war front. They use these uh, uh, softwares and so on and so forth. So why are we still badly with, uh, uh, what is it called, insurgency and so on, and you push uh, hundreds and thousands of uh, men into the bush and allow them to be killed unnecessarily? We, it means it, that shows our level of backwardness, even in this new era. Jesus so Jesus. I would have even wanted these people to deploy their strength more into things that we... Uh, All right, Chido Zia. Chido Zia. That would automatically reduce the security uh, uh, threat we have in this country. All right, Chido Zia. Your, po your point is noted. Uh, oh, that's Mark. Billions and billions. He said you are fighting for okay, security. Mark. And so many people are there and badly this, this morning. Mark, 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 thank you, society. thank you. Thank you, your point is well noted. You're advocating for more technology in the fight against insurgency. Uh, very well noted. Let's speak with George. George is calling from River State. Um, George, good morning. Okay. Yeah, good morning. George, have you turned down the volume on your TV set? Yes, I've turned down. So can we hear you quickly and very precisely? Okay, uh, I'm calling in respect to the judgment of the Supreme Court about the Imo State issue. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Speak. Speak. Okay, okay. So, um, you know, it, we are very surprised. Uh, like the last caller actually said about the, uh, the appointment of the, the CJN, you know, it was a very controversial issue how you came on board. And uh, the, the judgment that came from the Supreme Court as regards the Imo State issue, it came to every Nigerian as a big shock because um, it is uh, when you check the accredited voters and what the Supreme Court declared finally, it doesn't actually tally. And again, making the third, fourth person being uh, hoping is the man to become the winner at the end of the day, it's, it's I think your point is clear. You, you do not agree with the judgment from the uh, Supreme Court. Um, but a lot of people will remind you that the same CJN was there when Zamfara State turned to PDP. But that's a comment for another time. Let's take Eddie from River State. Eddie, talk to us. Good morning, gentlemen. I like your program. Yeah, we like... Go ahead. Yeah, I want to comment on the election in Nemo State. It is um, very simplistic to say, how can somebody that uh, Comfort is now coming to number one? In sports, if somebody wins gold and after a test and trying to be in loop, that gold is, is uh, deprived of the field for him, given to the one that comes second. The issue is simple. Elections were conducted in those units. He said, my, 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 my scores were excluded. My scores were excluded. After being collected, after being announced. 
And the Supreme Court discovered, indeed, as in truth, such numbers of his votes were excluded. And when added up, the number now of talking about the first and second and other people's court, it is not, um, there's no emotions about it. The court of law has nothing to do with sentiment. The court is not moved by emotions. It's not moved by what is the right in the papers or what opinions are. But the law must be so interpreted. Thank you, Eddie. Thank you, Eddie. Very clear. We want to allow you to make comments. You can yes. pick from wherever you want to start from. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank you very much. On the Imo judgment, let me quickly remind our viewers that the court, I'm not a lawyer, like yeah. I said, though I'm a law student. Okay. Yeah. We all are. No. <laughs> I'm, different I, I'm a law student right now. I hope to be a lawyer, so I'm reading law right now. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> because I, I like that profession a lot. Now, what happened in Imo State did not come to me as a surprise. I want to bring you down memory lane. The same, almost the same thing happened, not even worse happened in Zamfara. The people actually came out and vote, registered who they want through the ballot paper, and the Supreme Court said no for some technical reasons. All the votes you've given goes to another political party. That is what is happening in Nigeria. That was why I said in one of my submissions that I think there is a need to review the power of the Supreme Court. Yes, it is supreme, but the power of revisit should be properly enshrined into the Constitution. There is a need to revisit some cases. We have some cases that obviously does not make any sense to anybody. Some judgment, you mean? Or the uh, judgment, rather. Ordinarily, you can just sit and say, what sort of judgment is this? Mm -hmm. But however, in the wisdom of the Supreme Court, once more, the decision has been taken in the interest of national unity. Mm -hmm. you, you know, when, when, when uh, listen, listening to our callers, uh, this yeah. wisdom of the Supreme Court uh, yeah. seemed to be questioned by a few um, of our callers. Uh, yeah. And one of the calls that was made, he talked about the fundamental components of the Supreme Court. He says it is faulty, and he made them a uh, uh, reference to how the new CJN uh, came, came, on came on board. And yeah. we, had, we had a guest on the show yesterday who said that there was absolutely nothing wrong. He's a lawyer. The, with the way the CGN came, that the CGN, the current CGN, he was the oldest. I mean, the the the, the what's the word he used now? The most senior, the most yeah. senior, the most yeah. senior uh, as at, at that, that time. At that time, so it yeah. was logical that mm -hmm. whether uh, Onoge had issues, uh, mm -hmm. that he was the next in, in line yeah. for the job. Yeah. To be honest with you, when we talk about successions, you look at the hierarchy, at the table, the ladder. The CGN came, I would say, he rose through the ranks. He came about the way it should come. What my people are trying to talk about is probably uh, his tribal affiliation and stuff like that. And not until we move beyond tribal sentiments. What, 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 would, it, what would his tribal affiliation got to do with the Imo, Imo election? No, the, 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 the reference... Imo judgment, yes. No, the reference that the way the Supreme Court... It's oh, constituted. Yes. You understand that how he came into government is what I'm trying to address. Okay. You understand? Okay. When we look at, for example, if you talk about hierarchy, for example, we may have the, the, the first three, four judges coming from the same side or the same bend from, on, in the nation. When I say this, I mean people coming, for example, we may have about three, four judges coming from the southwest. So what that simply implies, if we are to go by this succession bid, is that the next three, four so, uh, judges or whatever, CGN, CGN. CGN, will come from that side of the country. So I think there is a fundamental problem. From one, the recruitment of judicial officers. Beautiful. You understand? It is not a problem that, that, it is not, now. that started now. It comes from the recruitment of judicial officers. Okay. We're going to open the lines again, but like I predicted, mm -hmm. someone from Imo State disagreed with you. 
Uh, mm. But you have someone from Rivers who also agreed with you. Yeah. But whichever way, let's get some more comment on these issues. Yeah. And someone has also mentioned something vital. Yeah. The issue of technology. Why don't we go into apps? Let's just go into applications. That Let can me solve this problem. Look at what happened between US and Iran. Let me clear something. We tend to compare Nigeria to the Western world. In Nigeria, look at the strength of our army and compare it to the strength of the US Army. Despite their technology, despite their trillions of dollars that are invested into technical maneuvers, you understand? They still have that strength, that manpower. In the military, it is called, uh, I forgot now. In the military, you know, I forgot, I remember, you know, you, no matter the strength of your technical powers, you still need land That's soldiers. Mean. You need infantry officers. The strength of an army is usually determined okay. by I the will, strength sorry. of his infantry officers. I got your message. We are coming to that. We have Ram from, Re, um, from Delta. I'm worried to be precise. I like to hear my wifey brother. Good morning. Talk to us, Ram. Yeah, good morning. Good morning, yes, good day. How are you? Go okay, ahead. We okay. want to have your contribution. All right. I want to speak in respect of uh, the, the verdict about the Hemo election. Okay. Okay. What I really want to say is that our, our my gentle friend there, who is analyzing the issue, as he rightly said, as he rightly said, that the Hemoites. They are good Christians. Yeah, that was why they did not revolt when they had the verdict. And what I want to let you guys know, there is something that really happened. The Mbaka's angle of it, whereby he said that he made a pronouncement that uh, uh, that uh, uh, Uso Dima is going to become the governor of the state in 2020. And you know, the Ibisibo lights who are very good, they are all good Christians. So, they now keep, when this verdict was announced, most of them who could have reacted, they now keep into the Mbaka issue by saying that uh, uh, Ozonima is actually going to be the governor in 2020. There was something beneath that uh, prophecy from Mbaka. There is something that I think Nigerians are not saying. I'm seeing something beneath that prediction. Something went under the water for that man to make that prediction. My mind is telling me that that prediction was not from God. You can, you can, you can, you can see, you can see you are, you are beginning to amuse us at the studio. All right, Ralph, thank you very much. Uh, uh, Ralph is suggesting that uh, Padam Baka's uh, prediction has a, uh, there is something he knows that we, we don't know, that a lot of people don't know. Well, that's Ralph's position. Uh, let's keep with David. David is calling from uh, uh, Quara State. David, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, David. Speak to us. My name's sake. Speak to okay. us. On, on a Montesco mission. Go ahead. Hello? Yes. On a Montesco mission. That's that what you will see. If a country is governed by a region, the Nigerian government, all the key positions and everything, is fixed to the northern part of Nigeria. So anything that Southwest is doing, they will go against it. The equation is not balanced. The Nigerian system of government is not balanced. Look at all these positions. And to the general, the service chief, all everything. Even the, uh, all positions that they supposed to spread across the nation, the positions gather in one region alone. What is happening in the Kano, Kano State, for example? Look at Kano State. Look at uh, Safara State. They have their own security party. And it happened in Southwest, and so the general of the Federation say he's in Lega. But remember, Anthony General of the Federation is not the Anthony General of the state. 
the state governor, they are the chief security officer of their state, and they need to secure their citizens. So to me, we have to check the architecture of Nigerian politics. This is wrong. David, David, uh, we have another caller on the line. Let, uh, thank you very much, David. Let's take the next caller. Yeah, you're on. Let's have your take. Okay, Abiola from Lagos State, the first caller from Lagos State. Talk to us. Good morning. Good morning. Talk to us. You're on. Yes. I, 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 I want to. I want to. I want from to the about, uh, move away from the noise around you. The I TV. Okay, go ahead. Talk, yes. What I want to say is that look, we are the one to secure ourselves because this Amateku is come to stay. Look at where we are. Li where I am living at Ikorodu during a uh, Badu issue. We. The EDG or with the settler of that place, we are the one that caught Badu. And we have police around us. When we caught the Badu, we call police to come and take those boys away. And the case is still in, poli in, is still in court. I cannot stay here and, be, uh, uh, and some people will be saying that Amoteku is illegal. We are the one to protect ourselves. Can somebody from Safara know the terrain? Of Ikorodu or Ipeche, where I'm living. No! Please tell the AGF to, 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 to stop that kind of thing that is saying. We are the architect of our own life. We cannot die. We, can, we, we, can, we, we don't want to die. We, we, value our, we value our life in Ikorodu, even in Yoruba land. About uh, the judgment of uh, the most state. Can, can people now talking about uh, this uh, APC is doing something and the PDP? Look at Safara. When a, 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 a old state voted for this uh, APC and the Supreme Court said that that, 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 that one is qualified and the, 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 PDP, the PDP should elevate the, 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 the vote of Safara. Please, the Nigeria must be restructured. All right, Abiola, thank you so very much for your contribution. Let's go to Abuja. We have Mohammed calling from Abuja. Mohammed, good morning. Hello, good morning. Good morning, Mohammed. Yes. Uh, the issue of human concerning the Supreme Court judgment. You see, there are still, we must not be a lawyer before you get to know the judgment of that human being. What am I trying to say in the uh, David Mark versus Abubakar Usman, Udoma versus Einek. 2015, that issue has been put to rest that on no account, a presiding officer and a coalition officer have no right whatsoever to cancel an election that has been collected from pulling units. The election of uh, uh, Imo State, which comprised of 388 police units, was duly collated, signed by the all air party agents, by security uh, officers, before it was migrated to coalition center. The people are not saying that these are the, the Lennox justices, the legal luminaries. Are you not telling me the unanimous the, 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 uh, decision that was taken by seven justices? These are not tribunal justices. They are not the court of appeal justices. Supreme Court justices that we are all for. If you take a look at that judgment critically, that was the best judgment based on that. You have no right. Mohamed, lucky you, you were able to talk on two issues within that short time. Thank you very much. And we have to take the last caller for today so that we can have our guest react on some of the comments. We have something from Edo State. Yeah, my brother, talk to us. Please make sure you turn down the volume of your TV set and uh, listen via your phone. Samson, talk to us. 
Good morning. Good morning, sir. Yes, sir. Good morning. Uh, I want to talk about uh, Amateku. Amateku is a very good idea. Very good idea in Nigeria. But we continue to see what is happening according to, with the security situation in this country. Amateku is a very important idea. If the, all the governor of Nigeria can can judge themselves to do that type of thing, I think Nigeria will be safe. You see how they keep people up at that? Okay, see how they go to the north and pack students for the for primary school or secondary school without recovering them? You see, if they say there's something like this, I'm not taking At least they will form the soldier or inform the police when all those things going on. See what the headsman is doing in our farm, killing our women, killing our men, enter village born every year. If there's this type of uh, security outfit in this country, then we could be able to inform the police or inform the army or Air Force, any, any, any other security. To save us from all this uh, mess, please tell the federal government to make you not worry I'm not a cool. As from Bini, I'm a Bini man. If, if my state governor or Bateki can be able to do this, I would like it. And secondly, he empower youth to get jobs to do it. If all kind of things he's doing, all the youth will get what to do. No more arm robbery, no more kidnapping, no more 419. Please tell the federal government to support this situation. Thank you. All right, Samson, thank you so very much for that contribution. Yes, yeah, Samson is saying that um, we would wish that all governors across <laughs> Nigeria should adopt the Amoteco. Yeah. Wouldn't that be likened to uh, state policing? In the United States, where we compare ourselves to all the time, we have the federal police and we now, have now you're police. comparing with the Western <laughs> world. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm, I'm bringing you back to most of the comparison okay. being done. Because most people will tell you in US, in Britain, now in this US, where we borrowed our democracy from, we have the federal police and there's the state police. Mm. However, there are demarcations, let me put it that way. You see, this Amotekun, like I said, is just a name, the Yoruba name, for their outfit. It is, it is something, there are some things that are natural that you cannot kill. This Amotekun is a personal security. In the East, we have personal security. I, sometime in 2010, I went to Anambra. One of my friends was burying his mother. We got there. It was their local vigilante that came, that gave us cover, that gave us protection throughout. The police was nowhere to be found. Their local, they had their boss, they had their local guns, they had, and you can see that they were perfectly, absolutely in control of that area. They know the terrain very well, even more than the police. Now, in the Southwest, this is our own version of local vigilante. I'm surprised at the outburst of, the, uh, of uh, Malami. I'm very, very surprised because, one, in the North, you have your local vigilantes too. You have your local police to the level that government had to bring these people under the cover of the military through the civilian JTF. So why is Malami now shying away from that fact? Now turning around and saying another thing here. Are you telling me the exclusive list of government was abolished when the civilian JTF was being concocted? Mm -hmm. So, what I want us to look at you, is this. You, you know what, I, or, or would, could we say that um, the whole Amateko initiative was a bit too loud? That was why it attracted such, um, um, such um, attention. Because we had Lagos State set up last month, we have the Neighbourhood Watch. These guys go about doing, doing their job. W wouldn't we say, uh, could we say that it was too loud? The, 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 there was so much noise about it, so much money going down, let me, vehicles and the rest of them. Let Maybe me, if they had quietly just set up vigilante groups within the states and then tell them this is your area of jurisdiction, this is your... Let your, me tell you one yeah. of the strategies of security. Hmm? If it is not loud, it is not an effective security apparatus. The very moment the armed robbers, let me, put, let me use armed robbers now. The very moment the armed robbers knows that we have a large catchment of soldiers or police somewhere stationed there, they will avoid that area. And if they must operate in that area, they will operate in a very, very discreet manner. You get what I'm saying? 
Amatekun, the formation of Amatekun is nothing out of the ordinary. In Lagos State, I was once a member of the Lagos State Neighborhood Watch. I was once a CDC, a CDA secretary, a CDC. I was once a member of Lagos State Community Development Council in Alausa. When we brought the Neighborhood Watch, I was a member, a foundation member of Neighborhood Watch. I wore the uniforms then as a CDC officer. The Neighborhood Watch is not as strong as what we call the Amoteco. Let me tell you something. In the native parlance, when they call somebody native guard, we have the psyche that apart from the western gun they are carrying or whatever, they have some native fortification on them. You understand? Even jazz. Yes. Hey. So you <laughs> dare not go near them. Tell me, tell me, our time is fast spent and uh, yeah. I don't know if we are still going to ask for. But let's look at one area that nobody called. Yeah. And is, 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 is this a yeah. signal? Mm. Is it a signal that the remembrance is not actually being remembered? Yes, to some extent. I'm quite uh, sad about it because I was expecting at least a caller to talk about the Armed Forces Remembrance Day. To be honest with you, people are disappointed with the government. People are not encouraged. People are not happy. People are not getting what they want. As we speak to you, a lot of people, millions of people are watching us on their generators. There's no light. So when you talk about, then the, the, we still have the psyche in Nigeria that the problem we have now, the mess we are, the military cost it. So when you talk about Armed Forces Remembrance Day, I was watching about two years ago, we were talking about, I, I was telling somebody to decorate me with the badge, mm -hmm. emblem. Mm -hmm. And somebody said, what do you need it for? Those people, and soldiers. said, ah, we have soldiers in the war front fighting. He said, uh -huh. nobody their job. Nobody then cause all this problem for Nigeria. Okay. So you see, that psyche is still there. But That's however, we must encourage them. Okay. Like I said. I will. So sorry. That's <laughs> a safe way to <laughs> land. Uh, you made your points and we quite appreciate your insight to all the three topics. And uh, trust me, we'll have you some some more, some, some other time when we'll be looking at some other issues. I uh, will quickly take that. a short break and so that we can wrap up with sport. Thank you once again, Taiwo. I'm uh, short blessing standing by to give us an update from the sporting world. Please don't go anywhere. Say something. We say no.